good morning. Thanks for joining me. I'm Laura. And this video is going to be for those of you who are my starseed people, but also those who may be called to the term starseed or just interested in this kind of thing. Maybe it's come across your radar. But uh, what I wanted to do was go through some of these really incredible, awesome, interesting um, reflections or experiences that people have had after doing or during um, one of my guided meditations that I have on here, which the guided meditation is called Visit Your Home Star System. And I put it up, I think, over a year ago. And it it's, well, I think it's the most popular one on the channel, but it's really cool because people write in and people, they'll tell you the experiences. So I just wanted to read some of the experiences that have happened and um, it's just really interesting because there's some things that you might be able to like sync up with or like tap into or vibe with and, and you know you might be like oh my god that sounds like you know I resonate with that that's something that might be where I'm from or whatever it is and or if you haven't done the guided meditation check it out it's pretty cool so okay I'm gonna just jump in and start reading so this first one is by um, Anahata Taro, so I might like mess up the names, but this person said, I was from Vega, okay, so the Vega star system, and you're gonna get names and feelings of where you're from when you go in, even if you don't know star systems, you might get names or um, hear something similar. So let's say Vega, and you've never done a guided meditation, you might hear Vega, or you might hear V, or you might hear a G, and then you have to do some research and figure it out. So um, other people might feel Vega or whatever it is. They might meet someone in the guided meditation that tells them, hey, by the way, you're in Vega. So keep, keep open-minded to um, how you receive the information. Okay, I'm gonna start, okay. I was from Vega. There was a huge city with flying pods. I meant, um, oh, I met my sister and mother and they took me to a private planet with three moons, a sunset, and a rocky area. I met all of my other friends and family. I cried. It was very emotional for me. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about this flying pod, huge city flying pod. So when we, you know, when I regress people and we go to different planets and whatnot, there, there is such a variety. So. They're mentioning a huge city, flying pods. We're talking advanced technology. So some planets have nothing. It's just a, a rocky terrain. And I'm talking to someone who's regressed to an animalistic alien form. And it's very primitive, right? So I've also gone to places like this where there's a huge city with flying pods. And um, is really interesting because the flying pods I wanted to mention when I had a regression with someone who was from Lemuria, there were flying pods like Lemuria on Earth back in the day. So it's cool because we are seeing advanced technology that civilizations before us have played with or have had, um, but we're seeing it, someone here going back and visiting that. Um, sister, mother, so a lot of times the sister and mother in these alien planets or the star systems, a lot of times they've incarnated here on Earth with us to continue the journey together and as a soul group. Um, other times we see people go back to other places where they're meeting up with family there who's still waiting for them. Like they're still waiting for their soul to come back and return. And I did another video about a client who regressed to Nibiru, the Nibiru video. She regressed to Nibiru and she um, realigned or was reabsorbed into her original body coolest thing ever so um so so it's very interesting when you meet family on these kinds of in these kinds of meditations because uh they could still be living out there doing their thing waiting for you to come back so the three moons the sun i want to mark here where it says oh it's a private planet with three moons and a sun okay so get this so i think i did another video where we were talking about how people humans um who create things like books and movies like the books like Narnia, uh, Wrinkle in Time, and Avatar, like how those were actually channeled messages. So it, so technically, the ideas filtering through these humans and being created into projects or things that are like uh, getting out into the mass 
the masses, so to speak. That's why we're seeing from these creative people projects with with like the, like the Avatar movie, the one with the blue people on the planet with the tree and things like that, you know, different suns and moons and all these things, it's actually channeled. So this is very, very, possibly very legit, if that makes sense. Like the information is probably very accurate for probably most of the creative stuff out there. Um, and so that's what this reminds me of. So let's go to the next one, okay? Okay, Beatrice Nenyut. Nenyut. Ugh, I'm terrible with names. I'm so sorry. Um, okay, I feel so easy, light, relaxed, and wonderful. I went to my beautiful home planet, Sirius A, and I met, or should I say, reunited with my beautiful Syrian mother, who she and the others were hairless, blue, human like aliens with pointy ears and blue eyes. I mean, their pupil, not the whole eyes. So, ooh, so blue eyes were, the pupils were blue. I should, yeah, that's so interesting. Wow. Okay, so what's interesting is, you know, we were just talking about Avatar and the blue people, like that is channeled stuff. Now, what's really interesting is if you go ahead and do some research on different alien types and things like that, you're going to find various blue creatures, like blue skinned, blue whatever it is. So that's super interesting. And for those of you who know like David Wilcock and Wilcock or Wilcox or whatever his name is, um, and his work, and um, they're talking, they talk a lot about these blue avians, which this kind of sounds similar, but there's like blue bird-like humanoid creatures out there that are very popular. I guess, I don't know what popular means. Like you, they're known, like people know about them if they're interested in this subject. Does that make sense? So there's that, and now Syrian, ooh, I even imagine, I well, she got to see herself as a Syrian as well. Next time when I come back to Sirius, I'd like to talk to my Syrian mother about myself and the people as well. By the way, thanks for meditation, blah, blah. Okay, so what's really cool is the Syrian thing. I had this really lovely client, and we went back to her home planet. It was on Sirius, it was in the Sirius constellation. And what was really notable about her and then a few other people that I'm starting to see like this connection about Sirius with is that people from Sirius have something about aesthetics. So if you are, if you, so if you're someone that is into home decor, um, like clean lines, beauty, beautification, it could be of the self, it could be of the home, it could be art, whatever it may be, there's something about these Syrian people, or I should say like Syrian based humans <laughs> that like the aesthetic, that like aesthetics, that need things to be beautiful or perfect or pretty or whatever it might be. And this I feel I like could play into if you have like an OCD personality about aesthetics, that could be very well like resonate with you um, being Syrian or from Sirius. That's what I've met. So, so that's really interesting. I've never heard about blue pupils though. So that is very, very cool. Now the next one is props 313. Okay. So props says when I got there, I couldn't see someone came and put their arm around me and walked me to some type of front yard and sat me down to help me see. He told me to look up and when I did, I started to see and then my phone rang. So that always happens. That always happens. People get distracted. Do it again. So if you get distracted, just go right back in there. It's not going to be a problem. In fact, people don't really realize that if you are relaxed enough and you are in a meditation and then you might get pulled out of it either by needing to go to the bathroom. Maybe there is a phone call. Maybe there's a noise, whatever it might be. Even if you open your eyes, if you can stay in a kind of relaxed place in your body and mind, even if you open your eyes for a second or two or go to the bathroom, you can come back and start where you left off. You don't have to start over again if you don't want to, as long as you can stay relaxed. So I say this because in my QHHT sessions, regressions, whatever, I have plenty of people who halfway through need to go to the bathroom and they're in a very deep trance. So sometimes I'm like guiding them, making sure they're like not stumbling. Um, but I'm not, I'm not going in the bathroom with them. That is not what I meant, but it's normal if you need to go to the bathroom, this or that, right? Okay. So keep that in mind. We're going to go to the next one. Do, do, do. Oh, but also I do want to mention about that one. Someone came and helped him see. So a lot of times in regressions, guided meditation, whatever, it is hard to see for a lot of people. But your job is to hang tight, keep the faith, 
relax even more and trust that someone will come and help you or something will be done to help you. So in this case, if he's saying someone came and guided him away, likely if he's not seeing and they're trying to help him see, it could be his higher self, it could be a spirit guide, an ancestor, loved one passed over, or it could be that he's already in the place he needs to be, like his star system, and someone is already there and they're like, oh, welcome home, but I know you can't see me, so let me guide you over here and help you. It could be whatever resonates with you, so just try to feel out the situation. Sometimes it's hard to discern though and that's okay so don't get frustrated. Um, okay so the next one is, come on next one, next one. Ah, cyan vlog, cyan vlog, okay. I was so relaxed I fell asleep. <laughs> I get this a lot. I put people in sleep a lot. I was so relaxed. I fell asleep or went into such a deep relaxation. I didn't realize what was happening. I remember being blue blue with red hair but unfortunately not much else woke up as you were telling me to go through the door will I be able to remember anything else that happened I was happy but now I'm sad yeah I get that a lot too when people um, return home they it's so exalting and exciting but also filled with so much love and non-judgment in a lot of these other places planets whatever I mean there are planets that are lower vibe too, whatever, but a lot of times when you're returning to one, it's usually a higher vibe where you came from. So that's why you're going to feel really happy and then you get withdrawal. It's not always, but that's what he's talking about is he's sad. He's, it's, it's withdrawal from that love. It's like, ah, I know. Have you ever heard when people have a near-death experience and they're like, oh my god, it was so loving and I didn't want to come back because it was amazing, but they said, you can have a choice and you should go back and so I went back and that's what they're talking about here so it's uh, it's it's like withdrawal so that's what they say to you like when people come back they're like oh I wish I stayed there because it was amazing and now I have to be human in this hard world again um so keep that in mind as far as that goes why you might feel sad I don't want you like feeling sad and then being like oh this depressed me so much no it's a reunion it's happy and you can always go back so there's that. And then next one is why Miss Yons. This was incredible. I was an eighth dimensional Arcturian and was greeted by my mom in this life who was in her Arcturian body. And it was the life just before this one. I was also with my little sister. They were both very high dimensional. We were in a forest and there was this pathway to a magnificent looking city that wasn't very large, but beautiful with giant crystal buildings. Ugh, yeah crystal buildings and we went through the gate there was this huge sense of love hello and it turns out everyone there was part of my soul family yeah amazing experience we'll do this later peace love and light oh can you imagine like I'm getting goosebumps just like trying to imagine what that might be like now what's really interesting is I've gone and regressed and you know I do these too I, I do explorations visualizations journeying all that stuff so a lot of times I will tap into these places myself um, what's interesting is I've had regression done. Well, I was doing, you know, I did a regression and then myself as well, we were able to compare notes about when we went to Inner Earth. So Inner Earth is a very cool place. Um, but they have, at least this part of Inner Earth had what they're talking about here is like these giant crystal buildings. And a lot of time they're kind of like spiral, spires, you know what I'm talking about? Like the rump thing. And, um, ooh, then they went through a gate. It looks just, it sounds amazing. So... So yeah, I mean, it's again, these places are very different. You're gonna get to beautiful cities or, or beautiful crystal buildings um, or very primitive landscape or somewhere in between. Yeah. Oh, and then there was another, wait, there was another thing with the crystal build, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, yes, yeah, so, okay, I had another client. This was a long time ago, that's why I'm just remembering. Um, so she, there was a crystal building there. Ah, okay, so when she came into her regression, she was, oh, no, little phone noise. She flew in over the clouds of this planet and then she dipped below and it was pure white crystal city. Pure white crystal, clean, beautiful, amazing. Can you imagine? So it's really funny, they say high vibe too, um, because also think about this. If this city is all crystal, if the buildings are crystal, that holds a vibration. Crystals have very high vi high vibration. So what would be really interesting is to know what kind of crystal and like the color of it because colors hold vibration and frequency. So obviously very high vibrational place if their city is made of crystals, which are putting out these high vibes too, which can't help but affect the people. Can you imagine if we had crystal cities here, like crystal buildings in a good way? Like I wonder if that would affect 
humanity like sending out the frequencies and helping us change our frequencies and become more loving and higher vibe that'd be so cool so the next one is melvin preston so he said when i finished this i felt so disappointed that i had to come back home the physical reality of home so again we're just touching into the whole like withdrawals disappointment sad it's you know what it is altogether it's bittersweet is what it is because you know it's out there you know and a lot of times you know you, you could say past life i think more people understand that but really these are parallel existences time is an illusion which means all the aspects that you visit of yourself in these past lives are technically going on at the same time so when you're visiting your home planet like this it's not something to be sad about it's bittersweet because you're not physically there i get it but it's not sad because it's actually still going on and that means that you can literally tap in anytime especially if you know where it is and how to get there so to speak like in your mind you know what i mean you can go right back so yeah, I, I think the most disappointing thing, which I can really understand, is like not actually being able to transport to this place and experience it in this kind of shell of a body kind of thing. That'd be cool. Uh, next one, Unicorn Fairy Dust. Oh, this is my girl. All right, Unicorn Fairy Dust. Thank you for this wonderful meditation. I was having a severe anxiety attack and I found this and it, can you tell I have not read these until now? <laughs> I was having a severe anxiety attack and I found this and it faded away to nothing and I was guided in the proper steps to handle the difficult situation that I'm in. Thank you so much. You opened a gateway for solution. Yes. Okay, so. I do want to mention something about this. So obviously she's not talking about visiting an alien planet. Maybe she did. I don't know. I can't, she doesn't say anything, but what she is talking about is very important because what it's telling you is that if you allow yourself to relax and go into trance during a guided meditation, even if you don't follow along the guided meditation, it's going to take you somewhere you need to be. So all you have to do is kind of just not focus on the words so much and allow yourself to get more and more relaxed and go deeper and deeper because what it's doing is putting you in touch with your subconscious, deeply in touch with your higher self, your guides, all those other entities, energies that want to help you. And a lot of times we don't do this for ourselves enough, right? So we don't take the time to relax and go within ourselves. So this was obviously a good opportunity for her. She took that time and what happened was in that nice relaxed trance state, she was able to find the answers because that's what they say when they say you have all the answers in you, you don't need help, da da da. I mean, you know, help like getting answers outside of yourself because you have it in you, you really do. Anything you need answered, it's in there. You just need to give yourself time and space and relaxation and get out of your thoughts and out of your head, you know? Um, so that's good, that's great. I'm so glad, I hope she's doing good. All right, next one is Jenka Krizan. I'm sure it's a very cool way to pronounce that when it's correct. Um, I tried to do this meditation two times now and I got so deeply relaxed I fell asleep. Still waiting for an occasion when I can do it all the way through to the end. I'm curious to what I would see. Now when I read this, quite frankly, I think that she probably didn't fall asleep like she thinks she did or if she did it didn't happen right away because that's what I was just talking about was needing the time to take the time for yourself to again like shut things off relax and allow and so when she does something like this or you do something like this guided meditation um you're going to get a lot of help and you might not know what's going on but a lot of people are transported to like healing centers in the ether like other places where there's healing energy or it's brought to them and they don't remember so when i do my group um workshop like i do past life groups and different kinds of groups or whatever but when i do the past life groups um these a lot of people will dip out like they they'll they'll come back when i count them in so as i'm going okay you know one two three four five you're back whatever i do um they'll come back normal, like everyone else. Everyone comes back, their eyes open, but they're like, I don't remember anything. It was black, it was, I was gone, I don't remember a thing. And a lot of times, because they are, their body or their etheric body is taken to get healing done, to do what it needs to get done. Um, other people do remember that they, they go and they travel, and those are usually people who are used to meditating more and are more in touch with like uh, the astral stuff. So it, it doesn't matter whether you remember or not. It's just interesting because, she, again, this person says so deeply, deeply relaxed. That's the key. That is the key. So again, if you fall asleep, just keep on trying. And then Starseed says, oh, simply Starseed from Orion with a little, little alien emoji. They're so cute. 
Love and light always awesome. Okay, Orion, you know Orion's belt, you know? So when they also, with these things, in case you don't know, like uh, Sirius and Orion, these are constellations, right? So there are stars in the constellation. So just because you're from Orion and someone else is from Orion doesn't mean you're from the same planet or same stars. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, next one is, do, 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 do. Yeah, Stardust on my heart. God, these people come up with the coolest names. Stardust on my heart, that's so cool. Okay, so wonderful. And I saw something completely unexpected, but beautiful. I don't have human words to describe it. Is this meditation a one-time thing or can I do this more often? Honestly, the first thing that I want to address is that last question is, is it a one-time thing or can I do it more often? You know, like, cause I do these past life readings with like card readings and stuff. And, and also this, and people are always asking, oh, do, is this just a one-time thing, or can I have another one, or can I, you know, and it's like, yeah, it, it's not a one-time thing, there's no rules for this, that's, that's why I'm trying to teach people, I'm happy to help and teach and, and do, I love my work, but I, I really just want to see people get empowered and really kind of realize there's no rules, so I find that more than anything, I, I mean, I'm full of resources, I can help with anyone's development or information or whatever it might be, but ultimately, I always end up telling people, but there are no rules. Like, just try it, you know what I mean? It's like, don't ask me, just try it, you know? So I think that's how you really become sovereign in your life is when you don't, you don't really ask for permission in that way, you just go ahead and I'm not talking about being bad, so to speak. I'm talking about just trying new things. Like, don't wait for permission. And in that respect, I have a video on permissions for the ladies out there, so enjoy that one. Okay, next one. No, I'm not gonna read that because there's nothing there. Floyd, okay, Floyd. I wonder if that's Pink Floyd. I don't know, maybe it's just Floyd. So, so when I went through the door, I was greeted with a forest-like terrain with a waterfall flowing. The water was very cool on my feet. I walked the path and was greeted by a Lyran humanoid named Adonis. There was a very advanced futuristic world with skyscrapers. It was a small area though. I felt I was in a feminine body. Obviously this is a dude. I felt like I was in a feminine body. I asked Adonis who he was. He was my soulmate. I was a reptilian on Avion? I don't know if he meant to say Avon or Avion, because I've never heard of Avion or Avon. Sorry, I, I should have glasses. That's why I'm like, what is this thing? Um, but he said Avion, the Lyran planet. I haven't heard of that. That's cool. I want to look that up. So I do want to mention, he said he was a reptilian. I've got to tell you, reptilians get such a bad rap. And like, yeah, I get it. Like scary and, you know, a lot of them are supposedly not cool, but there's duality. So there are also good reptilians as well. And um, basically, if you find out that you have an aspect that is reptilian, nothing to freak out about. In fact, go explore it and see what, what the vibe is. See what you get from that aspect. So I have, a, I have a video out about wanting to contact ETs. And there is a certain physicality, a physical sensation that you can, that you, that humans get when that is a chance occurrence. So go watch that to see what I mean um, as far as what I'm talking about here with, with uh, reptilians, aliens, ETs, and also how you might react to one if there is a presence there, if that makes sense. It's good to know if you're into this um, so that you can, I guess, like further your communication or move further along without getting freaked out. If that makes sense, because my I just want to take the fear out of all this. So, I mean, yeah, it's always good to be like skeptical and like uh, cautious and like you know utilize that intuition and judgment, of course. But I just I just don't think it's necessary to come at it. This whole subject fear based. It doesn't make any sense. It's just it's like the whole point is to get out of your human mindset, which is fear. It's we only have fear because we're humans. Okay, sorry. Back to this. Amanda Love. What a great name. Okay. I'm confused. I went to a desert. I guess that is confusing. And the thing I saw at the end of the path there was a brick. And they told me, pyramid, an Aztec. That's all I got. I need to meditate more. Help! I did some research, but it all seems so earthly. Okay, so very cool thing. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. Now, what we're talking about here is earthly presence of ETs. So let's say she, 
I mean, the desert could be another star system. She could have gone somewhere. But if she felt like it was Earth, and you can feel, you can feel Earth. You know what it feels like. Um, it's kind of like, if you want to know what a place feels like or feel the energy of something, it's so simple that you'll think you're making it up or that's this whole this whole thing about spirituality and developing your skills or whatever is that it is such a natural part of us that once you give into it and you start learning how to use it it's so natural and easy you think no this has to be more complex this has to be more you know like i have to work harder in order to get this and it's like no we've just been trained growing up that we have to like uh, compromise or or punish ourselves or whatever it is in order to gain things or to to have a, a handle or a mastery on something, it's almost like we're trained that you have to pay your dues. And that's not the case, especially when it comes to this natural ability that we're all born with, right? So what I'm saying though, is if you wanna feel what a place or an energy feels like, literally, like Earth, right now, if you just shut your eyes and you, you imagine the planet Earth as though you're hovering about it in space, right? So we're in space right now. Just go, come, come with me. Just come to space with me. Okay. So we're in outer space right now. We are looking down at the planet earth. Okay. Let that visual infuse into your, like everything. Like what does it feel like? Does it feel like what emotions are you getting from it? You're looking for the energy signature of this place, which is just simply allowing the energy of some of this place to just impact your senses in whatever way you can it could be emotions and feelings it could be knowledge it could be um what's it called like how how it's aesthetically um aesthetically appealing to you um it could it can come with taste and smell and anything you want but it feels like something that's what we're looking for energy signature so she did some research it seems earthly i would tell her if that felt like earth to you and you know what earth feels like to you, then it was probably earth. But I think what's happening is we are infusing this earthly like um, uh, 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 experience because if there's pyramid in Aztec, if you don't know already, pyramids are communication devices. They are linked to our star family. It's just, it is what it is. <laughs> so that's very ET to me to see a peri uh, pyramid and also Aztec highly spiritual uh, beings. We also know that there is a Native American tribe that has all ascended together that um, you can look up and check out that story, but it's kind of known in the community that this has happened. So to me, this speaks complete ET, um, which I I bet she's gonna find out when she researches. So just make sure you do, make sure you do your research because it's not about the research, it's about it's about the treasure hunt. So this is a treasure hunt, right? So what's happening is if you get the word pyramid and Aztec, what are you going to do? You're going to go Google pyramid and Aztec, right? So you're going to want to click on a link to learn about it. The link you click on, it's, I mean, some people maybe just start clicking from the top down, but I will look at the links to click on in, in the Google search and I will feel out which one resonates with me before I go in. And usually it's the one I need. So just do that and then you'll see you'll be led on a trail a lot of times. So she's probably on a trail right now. She's probably on a treasure hunt to figure this all out and it's really fun. And like I said in my, I think last video, it's really about the journey. It's not about the destination, but in the sense where it's like, you need to learn to be addicted to the journey so that you like forget about destination. Like what's the point? What's the destination? We're all gonna die and we're all gonna be returned to home and we're all gonna go on to our next aspect. So like, what's the point of wanting the destination so much? We're here for the journey. It's really fun. <laughs> Join me. <laughs> anyway, okay. Okay, I think it's, well, Joshua, Joshua Roberts. Um, this meditation was incredible. I don't, I didn't wanna come back <laughs> as I felt so at home. I was able to travel to where I have always wanted to go back to during this lifetime. I'm drawn to continue my journey again with this meditation as I have so much I wanna say and experience. Namaste, brightest blessings, much gratitude. Wow. Oh God, what a great feeling. Always wanted to go back in this lifetime. Oh, I have goosebumps, oh my God. There's not really not much to talk about. It just makes me really happy. Oh, good. Okay, next one is, ah, cool. Okay, it's short and sweet. So Matthew Grant says, I still don't know what a Pleiadian first cousin is. So, okay, yeah, he's not telling us like what happened or whatever, but obviously 
he got something in this that said he was or he met with a Pleiadian first cousin. But the biggest thing about this is he doesn't know what it is. And that's why I wanted to just mention that. It is so validating when you get names, information, words, all this in just stuff that you've never heard of. So he doesn't know what a Pleiadian first cousin is. I mean, you can assume like Pleiadian first cousin. You know, okay, yeah, I know, I know. You put one and one together, I get it. But what he's saying is, you know, I want to know more about this. What is, you know, first cousin, what does that imply about me? What, what does that mean for me? Because that can mean that he's like on a mission for his Pleiadian family or you never know. So that's just really interesting um, because he doesn't know. It's validating, but he's going with it. And that's the best thing you can do is just go with it. Next one, Laura1111. <laughs> I'm Laura and I love 1111. Okay, so this isn't me though. Um, in, in case you didn't know. <laughs> This made me feel dizzy and nauseous. I feel like I couldn't breathe. I stopped at 26 minutes and looked in the mirror and saw a new person. It's actually terrifying. I think I was overthinking it. Oh, okay. Well, I'll tell you what, um, when it comes to like being terrified by this, again, it's being human and feeling the fear of being human and not maybe having a discipline about what to do with that fear or um, not realizing that it doesn't have to be fear. So it's also very normal that if you're feeling physically not good to be scared, that makes a lot of sense. I, I, I'll give it to her. Um, but what what this reminds me of, what I want to say about this, where she's feeling dizzy and nauseous and da da da, I've never gotten that one before. But if we're talking ET stuff and she's feeling out of whack in her body, yeah, if she's feeling out of whack in her body like that, this pertains precisely to the video I just talked about going and seeing about, uh, it's called, So You Want to Contact an ET? That's the title, I think. But it's about contacting extraterrestrials and it's the physical contact or the contact of the energies. So in a nutshell, what it is, is your human energy is lower than a high vibrational uh, alien being from like Pleiadian, whatever it is. So if you were to be in the same vicinity, you're gonna feel sick because putting these two energies together, can you see this? It's gonna do this. And to a human, this is nausea, discomfort, fear, um, everything, everything that feels like uh, fight or flight mode. That's what happens. So that's what she's going through, I truly believe, um, which means that it's just her energy is coming across a very high energy and she hasn't, uh, it's not prepared for it. So all that means, if, if that's the case with you, is just meditate, raise your vibes. I would say get away from processed foods and um, you know, if you can start getting away from red meat at least. Um, basically just take care of your body, your temple, your mind, um, have good intentions come from a place of love, a heart, a heart space place, and start to walk the world that way. And your vibrations will go up real quick. And you won't feel uh, the flight or fight as much anymore. Okay, so this next one is Kovix by Kovix. My mind was well past what you were saying most of the time, very confused as to exactly how much of what I was uh, leading through was supposed to be my home. Oh, oh, what I was led through was supposed to be my home. But I managed to think through it as I came out of the meditation. I think I met either a friend or sibling where I was, and I felt like I was some alien creature I don't think anyone knows of. Mm. Uh, technology was incredible with cities that dwarfed NYC. But there were solid borders where the city's edge met nature, and that was a very respected boundary. God, that sounds awesome. The rest of the planet was completely wild with flora and fauna. People lived out there in little groups of five or eight, just as places to sit and refresh while out traveling. Everyone takes care of each other. There's no selfishness over resources. <sighs> okay. I hadn't had time to go. I hadn't time to go in when the voice cut it off. I still have excellent memory of and connection to the place now, though. Excellent memory and connection. Now he can always go back because he feels that connection. It's the energy signature. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Definitely helped with my homesick feeling. Okay, so what's really interesting is he's mentioning a homesick feeling. A lot of my clients feel homesick. They say homesick and they don't know why. Like, I'm not home. I'm not home. I don't feel like I have a home. Uh, look into the stars. Wow, I really want to be there, right? Have you ever had that before? It's more than just, wow, they're beautiful. It's more like, 
<laughs> like I miss you like that kind of thing um so a lot of my clients have that feeling and a lot of times when they regress it's we get the answer that it's because they're not used to being a human in this body and this planet and it's low density and they're used to high vibration in another body and another planet so that could be very well for you if you feel that way or someone you know feels homesick a lot of people are depressed if you come across suicidal people depressed people uh, depression anxiety kind of thing um, and they don't know why like it's not from childhood trauma it's just there it could be because of this we've come across that too I have had suicidally inclined people not that they're doing it or going to do it but they you know thoughts and it's normal to have like thoughts I think as a human what it would be like to like whatever but um, but a little, it, I'm talking about like where it's legitimately a thought like a possibility where they've considered it that kind of thing and again we regress them and a, a lot of I'm trying to think if it's every time, but there's there's been so many, I don't know if it's every time, but it was majority of them. It's because they are not used to being here as a human. Okay, so uh, we do, I, I, I just talk, it, let's mention this, this whole boundary line was respected between nature and, um, I'm like, nature, and uh, the city. Technology was incredible. So we are seeing future technology, amazing technology, so amazing, that's really interesting. Little groups of five or six. Now one time I had a regression with someone and they were sent to, they lived on a planet where people were sent in small groups because the planet was mostly inhospitable to life. So people were sent there from another place in order to habitat it, habit, hab, habitate, habitate? Oh my God, I'm an English major. I don't know vocabulary anymore, but they were meant to basically go there so they could start civilization and start building things. Good job, Laura. Um, but yeah, so we had that happen before. So when he talks about five or, you know, groups of five or eight out there just doing their thing, that kind of reminds me of that. Next one is Cool Blue Lights. What a great name. I could visualize the forest and mountain very well, but once I got to the door, my cat jumped on the bed and disturbed me. <laughs> Uh, I did see some geometric shapes and weird rounded buildings with long skinny vehicles. It looked dark like there wasn't a lot of light on this world. Sort of a permanent twilight. That's about all I got. Okay, so this is really cool. I just had a regression three months ago. It's just very recent. Um, and this place was dark and she was in a city. Well, she was in an alien body as a, a masculine type alien body on top of a building looking at a city escape and it was dark and it stayed dark it was their their daytime was dark their day their daytime was our evening our twilight and that's what he's saying and to, it's like you know so obviously I'm like tell me more like I want to know if it's connected like it's just so interesting um Yep, yep, geometric shapes. So, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure he's, he's talking about sacred geometry, which is something you should look into if you haven't. It's the kind of thing where I, I knew about it and I, I, like, I knew about it, but I didn't, like, get into it until, like, months after I first heard about it. I was like, no, 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 it's not interesting. And then it became very interesting, so you might, might want to check that out. Um, okay, so the next one. Ben Beniner, 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 ba Ben 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 Ben. We'll call him. Ben. Let's just say Ben Ben. Um, the mountain spoke to me. What? The mountain spoke to me, and I danced with the mountain. And a bit afterwards, someone I couldn't see, a figure cloaked in blue, whose head and any skin shown was just pure white light. And it, and it, oh my god! I felt that I felt it had more masculine energy. And they said they were an angel. Oh god. And they walked with me all the way till I had to leave. Oh my god. But still what I could make out was just snow on the ground. I couldn't build in my mind anything. Nothing came, but I but I did feel that I was the only one from this place. I was alone. Random visions of diamonds, sacred geometry, popped into onto my mind, into my mind, and the door when I walked into the world was blue, wooden, and energetic with a blue gem at the top. Pay attention guys, when you walk through a door, take note of the door. It's going to it, it means something. The color means something, the shape, how you feel about the door, what's around the door. So he found a blue gem at the top. I didn't have to open it either. I only had to walk in. The mountain knew my name. The mountain knew my name somehow too. Because when you go to these places, that mountain that you're going to see in this thing, that's your mountain. That's like, that's for you. That's not, everyone's not seeing your mountain, okay? If I could get some opinions and thoughts going about my experience, that would be helpful because I'm not sure what to make of it right now. Thank you for this experience. I'm so grateful. Okay, so um, 
so that's really interesting. Uh, the blue gem is something I would definitely pay attention to because you know blue in itself is healing but blue we've been seeing a theme of blue when it comes to ETs in this in this video so that can be, be very indicative. Um, also there's the idea of utilizing the color blue because of the frequency not just for healing but because it let's say you do come from a planet that is blue. That means that there is cellular and cellular <laughs> memory within you that vibes with blue which means it can also make you feel more grounded at home stable secure comforted loved if you surround yourself with the color of your home soul's home, like home origin as far as like star seeds go so keep that in mind too um if you see a lot of color like a uh overriding color during your meditations or this meditation whatever it may be try using the color in your daily life like wearing it or putting it um you know around your home for decoration in the bathroom whatever just like see see what that does for you you might even want to try eating food of that color and see if that helps with any health issues you may be having just something interesting to think about okay and i am not a medical doctor so there's my disclaimer um okay so then next is do, 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 da, da, da. oh okay so after a few of them i just like stopped and i'm not because because this, this video is going like this is a really long video i usually don't make these long videos like this long um but so i just wanted to read these because they were really funny <laughs> okay so <laughs> someone goes <laughs> why is she speaking so weirdly this would be a great meditation otherwise okay so there's that and then so <laughs> get this so then this next one because I threw these at the bottom because they were short and they were all the same theme the next one says I got visions of some sort of machine and they're like oh that's cool okay dot 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 so what's with the weird voice <laughs> and then the then this one's my favorite and it goes Dory's whale voice lol but the meditation is wonderful thank you so much hello Dory. So let me just say, if you do this meditation, <laughs> if I have a Dory voice, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, but it's it's really funny. So if you if you can't get through my voice, that's totally fine. You know, like to each their own. Um, there are a lot of other amazing vocal guided meditation people out there. Totally. Um, but but just know, like, if the voice isn't working for you, don't listen. Um, and it's funny because I actually wrote back to one of these. Uh, I, I wrote like, "Sorry, I was born with it." And then she like wrote back, and she's like, "Oh shit, I, I forget. People actually read these comments. Sorry." If it's like, it's so funny. So um, so anyway, there are the some of the um, was it responses or experiences of people who have done this guided meditation. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you have a really awesome day and I will be back with more. Let me know, like subscribe, like and comment, whatever. But like, I actually want to know if you like this kind of video where I am reading what people have written um, or commented or whatever about certain things like this. Okay. So let me know and sending you lots of love and I'll be back with more and love you a lot. Bye.